my channel. My name is Trisha and this is Oakley, my crusty gecko, who's going to be joining me for today's video. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing tips about crusty geckos. I get this question all of the time. It's always about crusty geckos too, so I figured it's a good idea to make this video. So I have a ton of tips. I'm sure that there's a ton that I'm not even going to cover in this video, so if you guys can think of any more, please go ahead and leave it in the comments. So my first tip about crusty geckos is that they can be upgraded over time, especially if you have a baby. So with crusty geckos, the babies, Oakley, <laughs> can you guys see this? Hello, where are you going? I know, I like the Monstera too. I agree. So baby crusty geckos um, can get stressed out if you put them in a really large enclosure too soon. And the way that you can tell that they're stressed out is that they will most likely stop eating. So if you're gonna be upgrading over time, you just have to monitor their eating and pooping. It's hard to tell if the babies are eating sometimes just because they eat so little. So my tip for that would be to always just make sure there's poop in the enclosure. If there's poop, there's your clue that your crusty is eating. Another tip about crusty geckos is that they do not have a scheduled time to shed. I get this question all of the time people think that crusty geckos are going to be shedding on a schedule especially as babies they're basically just going to be shedding depending on how quickly they're growing and they each grow at different rates so there is no schedule for it it's just going to happen as they're growing naturally so it's not really something you need to pay attention to so long as they don't have any stuck shed that you may have to help them remove it's not very common to have that situation with crusty geckos because they do have a high humidity level, but it is something to be aware of just in case. Another tip about crusty geckos is that floor space is just as important as the height that you provide them in their enclosures. A lot of the times people provide just a lot of height, which is mainly what I'm doing with my enclosures that are all up there that you can't really see right now. Those enclosures have a lot of height, but they don't have much floor space, which is why I want to upgrade all of my crested and gargoyle geckos to two by two by two enclosures because they'll get height and width, which is very important for them. Crested geckos have been seen in the wild and a lot of the times they actually are kind of down on the ground. Some of them naturally sleep on the ground in captivity as well. So it is just good to provide them the floor space as well as the height. Another tip is that UVB is not required for crested geckos. However, it can be beneficial. So if you do want to use a UVB for crested gecko, the best thing to use is a 5.0 UVB and it can benefit them. They may hide away from it or they may just bask underneath of it and they may absorb some of the UVB. So it is something that you can try out as long as you're doing it the right way and make sure you're not like fully blasting them with like a 10.0 UVB without hiding places because that could be very dangerous for them. Another tip about crested geckos is that you're gonna wanna be supplementing with calcium with D3, especially if you're not using a UVB source and you're gonna wanna be using a multivitamin as well. So typically what I do is I always just dust, I feed insects one time a week, and every time I feed the insects, I dust them with calcium with D3, and then one time out of the month, I'll use a multivitamin instead of the calcium. Another tip is that crested geckos require a humidity of 60 to 80%. Typically this can be achieved by spraying down the enclosure every morning and nighttime. You wanna make sure that especially every single night that you're really misting down the enclosure to make sure that they can properly hydrate themselves since they don't drink from water bowls. Another tip about humidity with crested geckos is that you don't want it to be overly wet. So you do want there to be a dry period during the day just to make sure there isn't gonna be an overly moist saturated enclosure that bacteria can grow in. Another tip is that some crested geckos are much more handleable than other crested geckos. So each one, hello <laughs> she just splatted on the ground so typically oakley is like very handleable but she's pretty active today it is warming here so i think i'm going to put her back soon because you typically don't want to be handling them too long i think that's a tip later on in my list but some crested geckos are just way more handleable than others each one has its own personality and will tolerate different things so sometimes people see that they're pretty easy with handling and they think that no matter what, they can get a gecko that they can handle. Sometimes that's just not gonna happen and your crusty gecko may just be especially jumpy and always trying to escape. Some of them, it's very rare, but they can bite too. So it's just things to be aware of because each one is very unique in the way that they're going to behave. I'm gonna go ahead and put her back because she's being very jumpy. Yes, 
I love you and I feel like you're probably gonna poop on me soon too. So I'm gonna go ahead and put her back, but at least you guys got to see her for a little bit. So that actually was my perfect next tip. That was like the best timing. So handling sections with crested geckos should always be short, especially if it is really warm in the room or it's summertime. It's not typically an animal that you wanna take outdoors or handle for a long amount of time because they can overheat. So these animals do not need heat bulbs or anything like that in their enclosures because they're comfortable with a room temperature. Obviously our human bodies are not room temperature, they're much warmer. So when you're handling your gecko, they can start to overheat if you handle them for too long. And typically that's when they're gonna start to get very jumpy and try to get away from you because they're overheating. So that's something to be aware of and make sure that you're not overdoing it. If your gecko starts getting super jumpy, it means it's time to put them back. My next tip is that bioactive enclosures are the best. Bioactive enclosures, I'm pretty sure I have videos all on this, but it's basically when you have a substrate that contains microfauna that will help to eliminate the waste within the enclosure working as its own ecosystem. So you can use springtails and isopods to do this. It's also important to spot clean, but by doing this, you can also provide live plants. They will also clean up the waste from the plants and it just works as a very natural, healthy environment for your animal. It will help sustain it, keep it a little cleaner and it will just be more naturalistic and enriching for your animal. So it's the best way to replicate how it would live in the wild, which is why it would be the best way to keep it in captivity. I My goal is to do this eventually with all of my geckos because I would love for them to all be bioactive, but it's absolutely the best thing that you can do. My next tip is that for people that are worried about going bioactive with impaction, because I personally had that fear for a very long time, that's why my geckos currently aren't bioactive, just because I had an incident with my Lichianus gecko and I believe that she was impacted when she passed away because her mouth was full of dirt. Um, so that kind of freaked me out and I didn't want to do it ever again. But I just wanted to make note in here as a little tip that crested geckos do not die of impaction unless they already have a pre-existing illness that's going on beneath the surface. So if you have a very healthy gecko, it should be able to pass a little bit of dirt here and there. They're able to do it in the wild. They should be able to do it at home as well. Um, one thing I would recommend is to avoid um, eco earth substrate. It's kind of dusty and it's not very thick in consistency. You can use it and mix it with other substrates. I find that that is the most successful in avoiding impactions or any issues with digesting a little bit of substrate. So if you're gonna use a substrate, I find that it's best to just mix it up. But impaction typically isn't something you're gonna have to worry about when you go bioactive. Another tip is that if you're still worried about impaction, a way that you can avoid this is actually putting down moss pads. So Josh's frog sells them. They're like little pillow mosses that you could just set on top of the substrate. That's what I did with Oakley's enclosure and it works fantastic. And it makes sure that like, even if there is a cricket on the ground that she goes to hunt, if she goes on top of the moss pad, she's not gonna get any dirt whatsoever. She also won't get any moss because it's very tucked into the little pad. So it works like a little clean carpet, but you can still have a bioactive substrate that way. That was a lot of information. I'm sorry if I'm like rambling. There's just so much information going on with crusty geckos and I do have a lot of tips. So they're all kind of just turning into one big ball of information and I'm sorry if it's confusing. Another tip is that crested geckos do not drink from water bowls. However, you can offer them water bowls just to be safe. So some of them, not all of them, it's not a common behavior, but some of them actually will drink from water bowls. So it is something that you can offer. If you are going to do this, you still need to make sure that you are misting down the enclosure to make sure that it's able to hydrate itself the natural way that it would by licking the moisture off of the leaves and off of the enclosure after you spray it down. Um, you also want to make sure that the water bowl is clean. If you're just leaving standing water over time, it can start to get gross and have bacteria in it. So you just want to make sure that it's always fresh. You also want to make sure that if you do provide a water bowl, it's not going to be an especially deep water bowl. You want it to be nice and shallow. These crusties cannot swim. My next tip is that live and fake plants are perfectly safe for crusted geckos as long as you do your research. So when it comes to live plants, you can go to joshesfrogs.com. They have a whole list of plants just for crested geckos that are safe and they sell them online. They do not have any harsh chemicals on them that will affect your crusty either. So if you do wanna buy live plants, you need to do the research, make sure that it's not toxic for any of your animals and make sure that you're getting it from a place that doesn't use pesticides or chemicals that can affect your gecko because they do lick the leaves in order to hydrate themselves. 
when you are looking into getting fake plants for crested geckos, you need to make sure that it does not have a lot of fabric. You want it to be a plastic plant because the fabric ones can get really gross over time, especially with a high humidity enclosure with all of that moisture. It's just a bacteria pit. So the best thing to do is just go with plastic if you do want to use fake plants. Another tip that I personally love for my crusted and gargoyle geckos are the cork rounds that they can hide in during the day and also use as a climbing perch as well. So there is a plus side to this. The plus is that your gecko will be very happy and content and have a nice place to hide and climb. The bad thing about this is that you're probably not gonna see your gecko as often because that's what has happened with mine. They love it so much that they go inside the cork tubes every single day and I can't see them. It's sad, but I mean, they're sleeping anyway and they do come out at nighttime and that's when you would naturally see them. So I think it's worth it to give them that. And it's also a great form of enrichment. My next tip is vertical and horizontal climbing perches. So normally I like to add a lot of horizontal climbing space but if you look at a crested gecko's environment in the wild, they are obviously, there's just trees everywhere and trees are vertical. So it is also important to provide vertical things for your crested gecko to climb on as well. That way it's just more natural for them and it mimics the environment in which they come from. My last tip is that if you are looking to get a crested gecko, be aware that the females do lay eggs. You will have to create a lay box for them or they may just lay it in substrate if you're using substrate. Um, but that's just something to be aware of. Some people just don't want to deal with that and that stresses them out. So if that's you, then you should definitely just go for a male instead. So those are all of my tips for today's video. If you guys can think of any more, please go ahead and leave it in the comments because I'm sure there's a million. I'm sorry this video has turned into this ball of like just craziness. I feel like it wasn't that organized because I get one idea and then it leads me to another tip that leads me to another tip. So I'm sorry for the chaos. Um, but I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. Maybe you learned something new and I will see you guys in the next one.